Houston's bugaboo. They'll move the ball at times between the 20s. They just won't put points on the board. And against TCU, you've got to put some points on the board because they will score a little bit. That was a 53-yard drive by Houston, and they come away with nothing. In the backfield now for TCU will be Rasco, Jeffrey, and Darthard. And off to Darthard across oh. right tackle, and he gets across the 30 to about the 32, and there's that number 50, oh. Robert Harper. And let me tell you what, folks, we're going to be calling his name along with Gary McGuire's all night long. Just get ready for it. All night is right. Clint Haley's back off an injury. W.C. Nix will play a lot of the game tonight. He's maybe their best offensive lineman. He's not starting. And Rasco, along with Jeffrey, the big numbers, watch Jared Delaney. He has excellent speed on the outside. And this time, Jeffrey gets the football. The Cougars are swarming. And maybe a gain of only about a yard. There's Robert Harper again, number 50. You know that Harper has, as we look at Houston's defensive line, Brezina out with a turf toe. I don't know if he's in the game right now. Glenn Montgomery's hurting also. But forget it. The two guys on this club don't make all the tackles of those two. Number 50's Harper, number 51's McGu uh, McGuire. Gary McGuire, and there's the defensive backfield. And Robert Jones, one of the better free safeties in the Southwest Conference. Oh! Quick handoff, and boy, they had both options covered. The Cougars did that time, and it was no gain, and uh, three downs and punt. Gary McManus came crashing through that time. Tell you what, if, if they'll water David Rasco every week or two, he'll come up in the springtime because McManus just planted him. <laughs> right in the astroturf. Back to punt will be Chris Becker, who has a 77-yard punt to his credit this year. Back deep is Orsby Crenshaw for Houston. He'll have some running room at the 32-yard line. They've got the... Blocking wedge set up, and he couldn't get around the wall. He got to about the 43, but you could see the red clad jerseys lined up in a perfect wall for Orsby Crenshaw. Not a terribly good punt for Becker. He's capable of better. Southwest Conference football continues on Home Sports Entertainment right after this timeout. Wearing number double zero on one side of the field. And the TCU Horned Frog on the west side. As the Cougars with good field position now will have the ball at their own 44-yard line after a 37-yard punt by Chris Becker. Power right up the middle to Stankus, and he's out across the 45 to about the 47. Billy Jones came off the stack. Let's see how they unfold underneath. That looks like Tracy Simeon, maybe the best athlete on that TCU defense. As you can see, last year, these two teams went up and down the field. <laughs> Would you believe four people rushed for 100 yards in that game? Yeah, four people had their... Uh, careers in that game, you could say. Yeah, Hood and Tate for Houston, and Jeffrey and Davis for TCU. Second down, Cougars need seven. Mark Davis on the option, and he gives to the first man through. That's Sloan Hood, and a whole bunch of purple and white jerseys on top of Hood. There's Tracy Simeon again, 6'2", 255 out of Sweeney. Kevin Dean back in the game now, so it didn't take him long to get back in there. He was uh, disciplined for missing uh, curfew last night. So he did not start, but it didn't take him long to get back in the lineup. And we've got that third three, third four situation. The first two times Houston's been in that situation tonight, they have kept the ball in the hands of the quarterback, Davis, and made the first down. The ball is just in TCU territory. Jet Brown goes in motion. Davis to Hood. He can't get outside. Good pursuit by TCU and a loss of one on the play. Boy, Billy Jones and Ron Lewis really came up hard for the frog. Billy Jones is playing with a severely sprained thumb. You can see it taped the left hand there. But number one, Jones will come up and force. First of all, the line does a really good job of denying the first two options. There's Jones cleaning up along with Johnson, number two. Yeah, Joe Johnson out of Waxahachie. Tony Brooks is back deep. And the punt by Simon Rodriguez. There's a fumble. I think he touched it. Let's see if the Cougars get on it. It could be a touchdown. Did he touch it? They're going to rule it. It hit the Cougar player, I think. I think. And now they're going to rule touchback because the ball wasn't controlled before it went in the end zone. I thought for a moment it touched both. I didn't know whether it touched the TCU player first. There's our referee tonight, Frank Shepard. And he says it's a touchback. Yep. Yep. Hit the Cougars foot. I didn't have a good angle. Our officials tonight, by the way, referee Frank Shepard. The umpire is John Gaston. Lineman is Bob Jones. Line judge is Walt Coleman. Mike Wetzel, the field judge. The side judge, Jim Potter. And the back judge, Randy McNally. So there's your lineup of officials tonight. That was a 33-yard punt by Simon Rodriguez, who was a walk-on from Galveston Ball. He had played for Ted Umbehagen in now, high school. Now the officials are discussing, did the ball go in the end zone, I think. It was touched. They, they originally ruled the ball down at the 17 when it hit the, the onrushing defender. Now, I know we're not waiting for the person in the booth to make a decision. <laughs> well, I don't know. Beats me, too. See, see, it's going to be a touchback. 
Now, if they'd have just called up to the broadcast booth, we could have saved them 45 you, seconds. You could have told him that. You had already made the decision, hadn't you? First down and 10 now for TCU. Rasco has Jeffrey and Darthard and the full house backfield. There they go with a wishbone, and it's a pitch back outside, and that's number 27, Tony Jeffrey, for good yardage before David Bearden spares him for Houston. Gain of about seven on the play. The key to that play is Crenshaw. Watch the quarterback come flying up and strip the defender. He'll be number 30, diving in right here. See, Crenshaw takes down the blocker, and everybody else then gets Jeffrey. It'll be second down, five needed for the Frogs at the TCU 25-yard line. Oh! Well, somebody must have moved because Mc... Montgomery came across that line of scrimmage like a fire truck and just leveled a frog. And it looks like it may be a legal procedure against TCU. Now, the officials are going to get everybody away and talk about this. And what they'll be saying here is, did you see anybody move? Nope. No is the answer. Nope. Montgomery just tried to beat the count himself. Montgomery's six foot, about 250 pounds, and he came right across that line of scrimmage. So that should be enough on the penalty for the TCU first down. TCU's drive started at the 20-yard line. Houston's defense has been remarkably good this season at long-distance prevention. Only three drives of 80 yards or longer for touchdowns in seven games. And when you look at poor records, usually those penalties reflect the record they have. Hand off uh, to Tony Darthard and Gary McGuire, number 51, on the tackle. Houston's defensive linemen don't get a lot of credit. The Montgomerys, the, the Brazinas, the Hoskins and McManus and Beardens. But their job is to keep people off of Harper and McGuire. Their job is sort of a, a holding pattern at the line of scrimmage so that Harper and McGuire can make plays. There's a pitch back again to Jeffrey, and he gets some good yardage. Knocked out of bounds at about the 33-yard line. Gary McGuire was in pursuit along with Robert Jones. You know, it's sort of like watching a symmetrical football game tonight, isn't it? Both teams running the veer. Bill Yeoman called the father of the beer, beer and uh, Jim Wacker wrote a book on it. Well, Wacker really ran it to perfection when he was coaching up in San Marcos. Won him a couple of titles with it. Motion, they break it out. Here comes Rasco again as he turns around, and uh, David Rasco keeps the ball across the 40 to about the 42. Robert Jones on the tackle along with David Bearden. But again, it's enough for a TCU first down as you look at the stats on David Rasco for the season. Third down and short, you're almost always going to get the quarterback keeping the ball, aren't you? Yep. Because the defense will generally shut down the first back, and you don't want to handle a pitch to the wide side. The quarterback can generally squeeze out a yard or two. Pitch back, coming again. And uh, that's Bobby Davis, number 22, tackled by Robert Harper. Davis will run in there along with Darthard and Jeffrey in the wishbone, and I heard it said earlier this year when Jim Wacker said he was going to go with the wishbone and the veer that especially some Arkansas coaches, said it was tough to run both of those offenses. And I wonder why, since they're both option attacks. Well, the timings are different. The blocking schemes are a little different. The subtleties, the offenses, are, are very little different, but they are different. You're literally running two different offenses. Going in motion is uh, Delaney. And he'll become the receiver, and he has it in Houston territory. Inside the Cougar, 45-yard line. Robert Jones knocks him out of bounds. Well, that time, Jared Delaney lined up as the fullback in the wishbone, went into motion, and became the receiver. Cute little wrinkle, because generally your coverage of the fullback is going to fall on a linebacker. Roscoe Tatum, number 33, comes back into the game, so now he'll be in the backfield with Tony Jeffrey and Bobby Davis. First and 10, the ball on the Houston 43-yard line. Good drive so far by TCU. Jeffrey gets a little running room and makes pretty good gain out of it. Inside the 40 to about the 37. Again, Robert Jones, the tackler for Houston. Glenn Montgomery came in and tackled David Rasco almost as he handed it off to Jeffrey. Boy, what a nice job by Jeffrey. This looked like about a two or three yard play because he's hemmed in here. He's got nowhere to go and he ducks, he avoids, he slips, he gets hit forward. And that winds up being a seven yard run. Boy, Robert Jones has 72 tackles this year, and for free safety, that's doing quite a job. He already has four or five tonight. Again, his straight-ahead power, Roscoe Tatum down inside the 35-yard line, and that's the necessary yardage for another TCU first down. And now the Frogs have that running game in high gear. It's a nice job. Every play in this drive has gained something. Keith Burnett brought in the play from the bench, number 84. And we'll look at the 
split beer backfield now by TCU. Rasco will hand it off to the first man through. That should be Jeffrey down at the 30-yard line. Gary McGuire and Gary McManus on the tackles for Houston. Watch Harper on this play. No one blocks him at all. 6'1", 240-pound junior out of Kansas City. He and McGuire, probably the best tandem in the country. I haven't seen any two better linebackers anywhere, and, and the pro scouts tell you they're going to go very high after their senior seasons next year. Jeffrey, again, across the right side, and they have found something over there, Norm, they're working on. Jeffrey going to the right side has made some valuable yardage. You know, that play looked like, unlike the play before, when it looked like Jeffrey wasn't going to get much, this one looked like he was going to get a lot because the defenders are screened off, but look at McGuire play off the block, shut off the cutback, and limited that one to only about four yards. Now Tatum is back into the lineup. Looks like a little confusion out there by the Horn Frogs. That play came in late from the bench. And it'll be the wishbone backfield. Rasco wants to pass. He's looking for Delaney. He's covered on the play. Now he's going to have to run for his life. Here come the Cougars. And he throws it out of bounds. Oh, my. That's intentional grounding for sure. Got to be. And that's an awful penalty because that takes TCU completely out of field goal range. That's a three-point penalty. David Bearden, Derek Hoskins, and Gary McGuire were all coming after David Rasko. But I think the guy who made that play was uh, Johnny Jackson, the right cornerback. He was all over Jared Delaney, so Rasko had to scramble for his life. And now, this is also a loss of down penalty here. Right. The official will make the loss of down. There's the intentional grounding. Loss of down. On out there, it's fourth down. And now Chris Becker will have to punt. This wasn't very obvious, Bill, was it? <laughs> Well, he threw it even over the cheerleader's head. There wasn't anybody over there to catch it. Now he says, whoops. Orsby Crenshaw is back deep for Houston. Good punt. And he'll let it go, and let's see where it hits. The Frogs are trying to kill it on about the one. It goes into the end zone, and it'll be a touchback. Consider what happened there. TCU had third down at the 25, and now Houston gets the ball at the 20. We'll return to the Astrodome in Houston right after this break. From your local at the Cougar 20-yard line. Both teams with two good drives early, but no points to show for it. Sloan Hood with only a couple of yards up that middle. Mitchell Benson is now back into the game, and big number 95, you can't miss him at 280 pounds, was a big roadblock. I can't wait for the a and TCU game when 340-pound Marshall Land blocks. Now, they're saying 280, but hey, Mitchell. That could be about an eight on the Richter scale, huh? Yeah. Second down, six needed for the Cougars. That's Edward Thomas in motion. Looked for Thomas on the quick pass. Now he'll go deep. Mark Davis, and it's over everybody's head at the TCU 40-yard line. John Booty, number 11, was not fooled that time. The intended receiver was Jet Brown. And you see the arm on Mark Davis. This young man is small in stature, but he can throw. Yes, he can. He threw that one well, well over the head of the receiver. But again, the man was covered. Davis dumped the ball long. It sets up what for the veer, though, is a very uncomfortable situation. Third down and six. Sometimes you look for the tight end on a quick pass, Edward Thomas. We'll wait and see this time just how the Cougars utilize it. They need six yards. On the rollout, Mark Davis. Oh, a big rush by TCU, and he throws it away. And here comes the flag, and rightfully so. Ron Lewis had him wrapped up for TCU, and Mark Davis intentionally grounded the football. This is just a terrible decision by Mark Davis. You just got to eat it right here, don't you? That's right this this hey and bad hands on the official too we should point that out <laughs> so young simon rodriguez will be back in his end zone to punt this time and mark davis the junior out of dallas south oak cliff will probably get a stern lecture from bill yeoman when he hits the sideline there's rodriguez freshman walk on oh. and it's off the side of his foot won't be a very good punt it goes out of bounds at about the cougar 46 yard line so, great field position for TCU. This telecast is authorized under rights granted to Home Sports Entertainment and is intended solely for the non-commercial use of our viewing audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of Home Sports Entertainment is prohibited. Announcers for this telecast are selected and employed by Home Sports Entertainment. Here's where the Houston offense gets the Houston defense in trouble. Teams have only scored six touchdowns this year when they've had to drive 55 or more yards, but they've gotten nine touchdowns when they've started as close as 50 yards to the Houston goal line, and here we are again, Bill. Yeah, that's a good point. That punt traveled only 30 yards by Simon Rodriguez, and he was in a hole to start with. So now, TCU on Houston's 41-yard line, 2.16 left to play in the first quarter. We have no score, but TCU in a good 
place right here. Now, somebody moved for TCU, but it was a receiver, so there will be no flag on the play, and Jeffrey will gain about five yards. I think one of the tight ends moved for TCU. But, Bill, the rule is you've got to be set one full second before the ball is snapped. And that tight end did not appear to be set that second before the snap of the ball. I think it was Gary Ford, number uh, 96. Watch it at the top of your screen now. Watch him move. See? Now he moves. Is he set before the snap of the ball? Oh, we got to continue it. Got to roll the tape. Well, you know, if you're... No, heavens, no. He's still moving when the ball is snapped. Now, if you're the Cougar, you should have come across the line of scrimmage and made contact with him. But he didn't... Uh, he was asleep on the play. Good defense. Look at the move by number one, Randy Thornton, as he came up quickly and made the defensive play on TCU. You know, I'm not well versed enough at watching the veer as Bill Yeoman and Jim Wacker are. But you could tell something was wrong with that play when it started. Yeah, it was just too slow developing, wasn't it? Yeah, the receiver of the pitch was in the wrong spot or something. <laughs> or something. Reggie Davis comes into the game now. Jared Delaney will be the wide receiver at the top of your screen. It's third down and eight, a loss of five on the last play. Let's see what Rasco does. Here comes a blitz by one of the Cougars and Thornton. Fumble! And Houston has it at midfield. Oh, what a hit by Randy Thornton. And covering it for Houston is number 24, Derek Hoskins. Oh, what a hit on David Rasco. What an admirable defense this team has. And this defense basically has not quit all year. Now, the first rusher misses him, but Thornton just levels him. You know, a lot of people have been wondering where Randy Thornton has been. You know, when he came over and started as a freshman for Houston in the Cotton Bowl, they heralded him as one of the great newcomers in the Southwest Conference, and he's more or less disappeared the last couple of years. And I wouldn't doubt that David Rasco is wondering where he is right now. <laughs> because Thornton really nailed it. Boy, he did. Put all 212 pounds right into Rasco's back, and now the Cougars will have it. At midfield, with one minute left to play in the first quarter, Mark Davis wants to go upstairs. Looking long, he's got Jet Brown, and it's just overthrown at the TCU 10-yard line. Oh, Jet Brown had a step on the TCU defender. Joe Johnson, Tony Brooks were both down there. The Jets got a step behind. This ball is well thrown, by the way. You got to give Davis credit because this ball is thrown almost perfectly. It's over the defender, and just barely over the hands of Brown. Brown so far this year has caught 17 passes to lead the Cougars for 220 yards. Second down and 10. Davis will go upstairs again. He's got LeBlanc open at the 39-yard line. Correction. That was Mike Rhodes, number 86, out of Houston Aldine. Tony Brooks defending, but Rhodes just dropped the football. Davis had it. Would have been a first down inside the 40. Meanwhile, on the other side of the field, it's got to be killing Jim Wacker. He had the ball inside the 25, didn't get points. He had a first down at the Houston 40, didn't get points. You don't get that many opportunities against a good defensive team. No, you don't. Third down and 10 now for Mark Davis. Let's see what the call is by Bill Yeoman. Jet Brown comes in motion. Oh, it should be pass interference. I see nothing. Oh and the ruling must be that he overthrew it. Boy, Mark Davis wants interference. Tony Brooks came right through the Cougar receiver that time. I, I can't believe that an official did not see this play. Well, he was right on it. Watch it again. You be the, you be the judge at home. You, you be the official. Look at this. My, well, I don't know whether he could have caught it. Cow. Yeah, but, but mugging a wide receiver is penalizable. Good kick this time by Rodriguez, and it goes back inside the five and into the TCU end zone. Touchback, and the Horned Frogs will have it at the 20-yard line. Much better kick that time by Simon Rodriguez, and it traveled 50 yards, and Bill Yeoman gives him a little pat on the rear. Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. This for you. What's the latest thing in sports shoes? Your feet and your favorite college or university's colors and emblems. You've seen these shoes in stores for as much as $34.95. Now you can own a pair for just $19.95. That's right, just $19.95. What's your favorite school or college? Texas, Texas A&M, Baylor, SMU, Notre Dame, Florida State, Georgia, Southern Cal, Penn State, even Slippery Rock. Shoes for most major colleges and universities are available. Top quality shoes made for walking, jogging, running, or just kicking around. Now only $19.95 a pair. Don't delay. Act now. Order your shoes and your favorite school colors and emblems. Order sizes for the whole family so everyone can show his or 
or her school spirit. Ask about our custom shoes for your high school. Write DMC Sales, P.O. Box 161406, Austin, Texas, 78746. To save COD, call toll-free 1-800-558-9000. Visa, MasterCard, welcome. Call today, 1-800-558-9000. Shoes ready for immediate delivery. Call today, 1-800-558-9000. Satisfaction guaranteed or full refund. A quick